Welcome back. All right, so some more news of the day for all you fine people on the internet for your Monday, November the 13th, starting off with New Jersey Devils news. So I'm wearing Devils, this of course being reverse retro colors, so it matches the Colorado Rockies who moved to New Jersey, so it works. Uh, Nico Heischer will not play on their road trip, uh, so that's bad news for New Jersey fans. The good news is it sounds like Jack Hughes is close to a return. Not joining the team for the game tomorrow, but he could play for them on Thursday. Uh, so the New Jersey Devils, who have definitely suffered without Heischer and Hughes, as one would expect, uh, getting Hughes back will go a long way towards getting that offense back up to where it should be. Uh, once Heischer comes back, Heischer helps at both ends of the ice, uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Uh, Jack Studnika is on waivers, so the Vancouver Canucks deciding to waive him, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, with the emergence of Di Giuseppe as a good forward for them, uh, with Teddy Bluger coming back from injury as well, there's just only so many spaces on the roster. I would expect Studnika to clear, um, although he's young enough and he has the size. Maybe somebody picks him up, but I think he probably does clear if he doesn't. Uh, maybe he ends up back in Boston, but that would surprise me too. Boston's off to a great start. So, uh, we'll see whether or not he clears. Um, I wanted to clear something up a little bit here with the Hall of Fame. So, the Hall of Fame inductions are today. Um, this is, I think, why there isn't a game starting until 5.30 tonight. There's just the two games today. Uh, there's a discussion of how the NHL should schedule around the Hall of Fame. And then there's a lot of, well, the NHL, this is on the NHL. The Hockey Hall of Fame is not run by the National Hockey League. The Hockey Hall of Fame is an independent body altogether. The National Hockey League has no input on who does or doesn't get into the Hall of Fame. The Hockey Hall of Fame is completely on its own. So while the NHL and the Hall of Fame work together on promoting nights like tonight, the NHL isn't really, I don't, I'm not aware of them making money off of it at all. Uh, when it comes to the ceremony and you know everybody watching and all that, to my knowledge, there isn't any money that directly goes to the National Hockey League from that. It just goes into the Hockey Hall of Fame. So the idea of the NHL, you know, making it so, so it's easier to watch and why aren't they broadcasting it here and there? It's not a National Hockey League broadcast. So it would be sort of like saying, well, why isn't the NHL making it easier to watch the World Juniors? Uh, why is it the gold medal game that, that there's still games? like? And and it's a discussion we can have, sure, but it's it's one of those things that the National Hockey League doesn't have an official affiliation. There are just the two games tonight, and by the time they start, the Hall of Fame induction part's over. I will agree with calls that maybe on trade deadline day, they could make that a day where there aren't hockey games. And I say that from a perspective of not just like, oh, you know, for the for the, the fun of the trade deadline, but there's a lot of teams, a lot of, a lot of players get moved, and I think it would make sense to have that day off so that guys can pack and get to their new team and, and just have that day to get ready for it. But at any rate, National Hockey League schedules games on both days. Uh, so good news for Seattle fans. Brandon Tanev is off the injured reserve. Uh, so now now your your fingers have to be crossed that he isn't going to get injured again this season. With the way Tanev plays hockey, it's a lot like his brother Chris in, in Calgary. Um, they, they just play that style of hockey that injuries are always going to be a concern. But if they played in such a way that you don't have to worry about the injuries, you'd be disappointed. Because they wouldn't be running around the ice and, and, and doing some of the stuff that they do. Which makes them so darned entertaining to watch. So we'll see how Tanev's return works out for a Seattle team that's been very up and down the last couple of weeks. Uh, Andreas Athanasiu is week to week with a lower body injury for Chicago. Uh, Hall is still day to day. So, um, well, no, Hall came... He's not. It's not week to week with Hall with the, the what looked like an ankle injury. Uh, but Athanasiu, it's more of a long-term thing. So it is week to week. It's, it's bad with Hall that I'm like, okay, which injury is this? Right, yeah, the leg. Right, yeah, no, he hasn't come back yet. So just, it's it's the third time he's been on the injured list. So apologies. But yeah, Athanasiu out week to week. Uh, again, for Chicago, this is a year where there's not a lot of expectation with them, if any. And I don't think there's much at all. Uh, it's really about how's Bedard playing? Do you have him properly surrounded with the right veterans? I think Felino's been fantastic, and I think Perry's been pretty good for them too. So, uh, just from a perspective of giving them that leadership and 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 being a good example on the ice so far. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll see how Chicago does without a then a see you. Uh, Milan Lucic. Uh, so the other day during one of the Boston games, they had Lucic up in the uh, the the press box during the game. Now usually I get kind of a little antsy with that. Yesterday during the Chicago Florida game, I was watching the Chicago feed and. 
I mean, you know, you have Seth Jones' mom there, that's fine, but then you're not calling the action. So something we talked about before, where you're not talk, not calling the action. When Lou Cheech was being talked to by Jack Edwards and, and by Andy Brickley, it felt a little different. Like, I think Lou Cheech might have chops to be a good color analyst when his career's done, uh, but it sounds like he's about a week behind in his recovery, according to coach Jim Montgomery. Uh, and as a player gets older, eh, that happens. It just... The, the body sometimes doesn't want to recover as quickly as it might have when you were 10 years younger. So uh, hopefully for Lucic, he's back sooner rather than later because uh, Lucic has been solid in their bottom six so far. Uh, again, uh, he signed a contract with Boston that is completely reasonable this year and will probably finish his career as a Boston Bruin, which is how it should be. Uh, but yeah, he's about a week behind in his recovery. A little bit of setback there and it happens. Uh, Elliot Friedman. So as the Chris Knobloch era begins in Edmonton tonight, Elliot Friedman basically saying the idea that Connor McDavid pulled the strings on this is not true. So there is there is a, a line there where Knobloch was the coach for Connor McDavid in Erie. So the idea that he would you know go to the team and say, "I want my coach." We we've, we've heard players that will maybe have an opinion on coaches before. Uh, Connor McDavid though saying he was surprised by the. Uh, dismissal of Woodcroft. Uh, he loved playing for Woodcroft as well as Dave Manson, who was let go as well. Um, is he excited about Knobloch coming in? Yes. Um, he's not happy about how this season's gone, um, but it, it definitely sounds like the Oilers, much like a lot of us, don't think that the coaching was necessarily the problem there. And in the advanced stats video I did this morning, it's a lot of bad luck going around in Edmonton right now. So the, the one thing with Chris Knobloch is, according to Elliot Friedman, and Jeff Merrick chimed in right away to agree with him on 32 Thoughts, is that Jeff Jackson has been a fan of this coach for years and has wanted him for years. And that there are some in the NHL that are surprised the New York Rangers would make him available and let him go because he was seen as a, a really good up-and-coming coach uh, who was going to be a very good NHL coach at some point soon. So he was coaching in Hartford. The Rangers gave the Oilers permission to talk to him about the, the head coaching position, and of course he takes it. Uh, so we'll see how things go. Again, it's a it's a new era for the Oilers starting tonight. We'll see if it's a winning era or not. Again, the Islanders not exactly a juggernaut coming in, so that's going to be an interesting one to watch. Uh, Connor Timmins. So if you're a Leafs, Leafs fan and you're looking for Timmins to come back, I have some potentially good news here in that he could play in the Global Series games in Sweden this weekend. Um, I think Toronto plays on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, correct? At any rate, um, I know there's the Sunday game at 5 a.m., or as I call it, no. So it's 5 a.m. my time, and it's just that's a no on a Sunday morning. If I'm up till midday, it's just a no. I'm just letting people know straight up front, no. But uh, Timmins could very well play in the Global Series. Uh, he has not played yet this year, but he had a very good training camp and preseason going at the time of his injury. So getting him back into the lineup, considering the Toronto defensive woes that they've had this season so far if he can get in there and be effective it will go a long way towards fixing some of what's been wrong in Toronto uh, although if they can play like they did against Vancouver in these games in Sweden they're going to be all right uh, Lafreniere so we've t heard a lot of discussions with Lafreniere over the years about how he's a bust and he sucks and over the summer I know there were these rumors that you know these teams especially out in Vancouver Vancouver really wants Lafreniere good luck um, I never reported on it other than to say it's not happening. The Rangers aren't going to trade him. And it looks like their patience has been rewarded with the recent play of Alexi Lafreniere. Uh, three goals, four assists, seven points in his last four games. And he looks good. He's, he looks the best he has in the National Hockey League. Uh, again, as I've said for years now, not all players develop at the same rate. Not everybody comes into the league and takes over right away. It doesn't matter where they're drafted. Uh, for some guys, it just takes a bit longer. And that seems to be the case with Lafreniere. And so, got my fingers crossed that uh, that he continues to produce at the rate that he has been. Because uh, I like him. I think he's good. And I think that kid line in general has been good. Now, if only Capo Caco can get going, right? Uh, that's the dream. And that one, that dream, I, it's, uh, I, I'm absolutely still hoping that happens at some point. And I do look at Caco and think that if his production stays low, he probably gets moved at the end of this year. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Your three stars for the week in the National Hockey League. Sam Reinhart, number one star from the Florida Panthers. Four games, three goals, seven assists, ten points. Reinhart's playing fantastic hockey right now. Uh, best hockey I think he's played in his entire career. 
Kyle Connors, the number two star in three games with the Jets. Five goals, three assists, eight points. Connors playing the way that I know he can. And William Nylander, the third star from the Toronto Maple Leafs in four games this, this week. Four goals, three assists, seven points. Very solid numbers for Nylander, who's looking for some money. And the latest on negotiations that I've seen is that, you know, maybe if other players were playing on a, uh, a discount, he might be more willing to take the discount. But since it's a team of players who haven't really taken a large discount to stay in Toronto or to play in Toronto, he may not feel that there's any reason for him to have to take the discount because they didn't. So that's where we're at with that. But again, we're a long ways out from the trade deadline. We're a long ways out from next July. I don't think there's any reason to panic when it comes to Nylander. That being said, if he keeps playing the way that he has been, there will be some panic about him potentially leaving. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.